Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video for Python for Automation testing course. And in this video, we're going to talk about collections in Pythons. So in our last video, we discussed about variables, types, condition statements. And in this video, we're going to talk about the collections. Because even before we actually move into the loopings, like for loop or while loop, it is super important to understand some collections so that only then we can actually enumerate or iterate or loop through an item within Python. And that's what every programming language does. And that's exactly what Python is also going to do for us. Let's quickly jump into the collections then. In Python, there are many different ways of storing the element in a collection, something like list or tuples, sets, dictionaries and arrays. And the one which we mostly use for automation testings are like list arrays and dictionaries, but tuples and sets are something which we don't probably use that, but there are rare cases that we may be using it, but there are some applications or libraries that we are going to be working with or using within our automation, maybe using the sets and tuples. So it is better to have an understanding about it, but we are not going to really discuss about these sets and tuples in this particular video, but we're going to talk about the rest of the collections, something like arrays. So the arrays concept in Python is pretty much exactly the same way, like how it works. For instance, if I have in automation testings, if I have something like browsers, where I'm going to create an array of browser, something like a Chrome browser, you can see that I have opened a square braces there, and then I'm just going to do Chrome and Safari, and maybe Firefox, something like that. So these are the browsers which I have. And if I want to retrieve all the browsers from an array or a list, then probably all I can do is I can just do something like this. Print of the browsers and then like every array actually has an index. You can see that it shows me that there is an optional of text something like that, which means it's basically telling us that there is something on the index where we can use a square brace or something like this, and you can pass an index like zero. And now if you try to print this, I mean, execute this code, you can see that I could get the Chrome coming in over here, right? And that's exactly what I can do for the other operations as well. So let me just clear this guy and let me add one more browser. I just wanna show something else apart from this one. And then I can tell you what it is. So I have added IE and Opera this time. And let's say if I want to uh, get the second index of the browser or the third index of the browser. So it's a zero base index like zero, one, two, three. So now if I execute this code, the answer is gonna be IE, right? So it just works something like that. And now let's say I want to get the first three browsers within my browser uh, array I have got. So I can just do something like this, like zero colon three, which means I'm gonna get uh, the first browser to the third browser. So if I just execute this, you can see that I get the Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. So this is the range that I can define within the uh, array as well. So this is one way of working with the collection. And this is something very, very interesting because most of the time we are gonna work with data-driven testing uh, in automation testing. So having a knowledge on the collections is really, really important. And that's gonna be really, really helpful as well. And let's say if I want to insert a value within an array or a collection, I can just do something like this. Browsers of uh, let's say if I want to insert in the uh, first position or in the second position, I can just do something like this. And over here, uh, I can do something like an unknown browser, something like that. I'm just going to save it. And now if I execute this code, you can see that I get Chrome, Safari and unknown here. So basically it's just overriding the Firefox with unknown value there. Right. So it is like kind of inserting a value forcibly on the collections and then the existing collection is completely gone. So I know that this is not a right way of doing it. Like you cannot really override that. So you want basically to add a value on the collection. So if you want to do something like this, probably you can just do something like browsers dot and you can see that a whole lot of method comes in where Visual Studio Code is again, once again, very, very intelligent to tell us that, okay, there is a method called append where you can use that as well. So let's say I want to add uh, maybe unknown on that list instead of just overriding the value. I'm just gonna save this. Let me just comment this code 
or let's delete this code and now if i try to run this uh, you can see that i get the chrome safari and firefox but i don't know what is the uh, unknown value is it whether is it really inserted or not i know that the last item is going to be probably the unknown but if i want to really get the value which are all saved within the collection that's when the iteration come into picture so basically i need to iterate through all the browsers which i have got and then i want to print the value and i can i want to see how the values can look like so in order for doing that that's when the looping comes into picture so looping is when you actually really require to perform certain actions so once you type a for in there you can see there is something called as a code snippet coming in for the python code from visual studio code again this is because of the python plugin that we installed within visual studio code and the feature is coming in so once i hit enter you can see that brings me up a template there telling the target list in expression list pass so which means this is the basic syntax right now we got the syntax it's itself so if you are pretty familiar with programming you might have seen the exact same syntax even in java but just that there is no uh, braces there to open and close because that's what the whole language is there right so it's all intendation there is no braces as we already discussed uh, so the expression list in here is going to be the browsers we already know that and the target list let's say we're going to call this as maybe browser so i want to get all the browsers uh, i want to iterate them and i want to print the value so not to print again print and then you can just print the browser as usual instead of browsers and let's try to comment this oops comment this code i'm gonna save it and now if i try to execute this code you can see that it just prints me up chrome safari firefox ie opera and unknown so basically it has also appended the unknown for us and then it's printing so this is how you can actually loop through a collection within python so basically what we have did is you can also call this an array or you can also call this as a list because basically we are doing it more like a list and because we are doing an append and something like you can also do something like insert or remove and pop something like that so you can do all sort of things uh, if you also see the method coming in you can see all these method comes in like pop remove reverse sort uh, index extend count all these methods are very very helpful while you work with the collection itself right so that's it this is how you can work with the arrays and you can perform a looping within a collection you can also do something like uh, maybe copy of two list or joining two list if you want to so those kind of things also uh, you can do but mm, there are very very rare cases that we will be doing that in automation so probably we're not going to discuss that as well and the next collection which i'm very interested in is the dictionary because dictionary is very very handy most of the time we'll be using that within our automation testing for instance if there is a config file within our code and if you want to read the config file and store within a dictionary so that we can read the value out by passing the key and we get the value out from the dictionary so that's something most of the time we do it in programming language and that's exactly what we'll be using within the automation testing as well and that's exactly what we'll be doing in here as well so for instance if i have a config uh something like that so this is one of the dictionary so the syntax of creating dictionary is braces finally yeah so now we are getting into that uh this is the first time we have seen the syntax coming in i guess that is the reason the whole python has got no braces itself so this is one of the syntax very very super simple there is nothing called dictionary of something like that in many programming languages that you do it's very simple in python basically this is the dictionary so let's say if i want to have a, a config file where i'm going to specify that i want to run the test in opera browser and my application under test is basically a google uh, site the test which i'm going to run is basically a smoke test something like that and uh, the logging whether is it enabled or not so probably i can just queue like uh, true something like that so this is how we define the dictionary within our code and if you want to read the dictionary value out from the python code it's very very simple all we're gonna do is uh, let's say if i'm just gonna do print of config and there is nothing called i mean there is something called as index you can do that let's say if i just put zero let's see what's going to basically happen if i put zero and if i run that 
you see there is an error coming in. It tells that you cannot really print the value of zero because there is a key error of zero. You can't really do that with the dictionary like how you did with the list or the array that we discussed above. All you're gonna do is there is a method called as get. So within get, you can pass the key and that returns you the value out from the dictionary that you're looking for. So for instance, the, the key which I'm looking for maybe is a browser and I want the value to be Opera coming in. That's it. So if I run this, you can see that I get the value Opera out. And for instance, if I just pass the test and I want to see the smoke coming in from the code out. See, that's the smoke, right? So this is how you can actually execute the code and you see how it actually works. So this is how you actually work with uh, a dictionary to read the value and write it back. And if you want to, again, loop through this dictionary, you can also do that. So again, the same for loop, so you can do that. And let's say this is the config, configs like that. Uh, and you're gonna get the values out, let's say conf. And let's say I wanna print the value. So I can just print off the conf. I'm gonna save this. And if I execute this code, you can see that prints all the value out, like browser, AUT, test, and log. But I, I don't want the key value, but I really want the values out from this particular config file instead of getting the keys like browser, AUT, and test, and log. So in order for doing that, there is something called as values within the dictionary. So values is basically a method. You don't really have to pass like a values as a type like a variable, you actually need to use it like a method, only then you can actually get all the values out. So now if I try to execute this code, oops, I'm getting an error. Oh my God, I just missed this F. So I'm gonna save this. And now if I execute this, uh, you can see that I get the smoke, Opera, Google site, smoke, and true. I mean, it just prints everything value out from this particular iteration, which is all pretty cool. So this is how we can see that we can work with a dictionary. Uh, maybe few more things like if you want to uh, probably do something like uh, adding a value or maybe checking a value, maybe checking a key actually exists within a dictionary, you can do that as well. So uh, for doing that, you can put an if condition and you can specify something like a if browser in uh, maybe config. If it is, then just print. Uh, exist something like that you can do that as well you can save it uh, and then if I try to execute this oops because I s left this colon you can see that the exist comes in right so this is how you can see that you can check the value as well so these are some of the easiest thing that you can do within dictionary and these are the collections that you can work with I mean I've not really talked about arrays a lot but I have really touched arrays and list together and dictionaries as a whole. Uh, but we have not talked about tuples and sets as I told you. Yes, but these are the collections that you can work with in Python. And we also discussed about for loop this time. There is something called as while loop. Of course, while loop is pretty much exactly the same that how you work with any other programming language. I have not really touched the uh, while loop in here, but you can just go ahead and see how it actually works. But most of the time, believe me, in automation, we may not be using while loop. We will be using most probably for loop like this and we'll be playing around with it and that's more than enough for now. But yes, this is the idea, right? You got the idea and how it works. But in our next video, we'll see how to work with functions because as you can see, this code is getting very, very bigger, very, very unmaintainable. It's super important time for us to make it like a block of code so that we can work with a file that you can see over here. Meet you in our next video. Thank you.